Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We head straight to our first conversation where we look at the issue of tax evasion. Now, Nigerians have actually witnessed a pattern of disturbing uh, disregard for obeying financial obligations by government agencies. And that's really, really saddening. At a time where you see tax increased taxes and tariff, uh, not even minding COVID-19 and all of the hardship that Nigerians have to go through. Of course, you have government agencies not obeying and doing the need for. Uh, that will be our conversation this morning. Of course, we have an economist who will be making sense of all of this. We look at the implication for us as a country and the way forward. We have Ken Ife, who is on standby. Now, according to reports by the FIRS, uh, it says that uh, we have actually lost 5.8 billion naira to tax evasion by MDAs. Good morning, Mr. Ken Ife. It's good to have you join us. Hi, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. All right, sir. Uh, let's start off. Let's share your thoughts. Uh, I'd like to ask you what you uh, what are your thoughts are on this particular issue. I mean, talking about the fact that we have lost 5.8 billion our tax evasion by government uh, agencies, ministries, and departments. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I think 5.8 billion naira is an understatement because this practice is very pervasive across the ministries, let alone the agencies. I mean, I personally have experienced this uh, some years ago, I think about seven years ago, where I think it's probably Ministry of Works, no, not Works, I think it was Power or something, where they deducted the withholding tax and they never remitted that. So my company went to FIRS and FIRS looked at their portal and they didn't see the remittance. So my, my peer had to go back to get the receipt from the ministry and took it to the, I, uh, to the FIRS and still they didn't create it, they didn't accept. I said, what is your problem? This receipt is issued by a ministry. This is the evidence that I, I they remitted the tax. You've actually taken the money. And then you haven't, is it my problem that it has not gone into the, start an investigation. Investigation, they didn't start. Credit, they didn't give to the company. And they stored the company because it's so unfair that companies will be will have to face the fact that they can't get tax clearance because somebody there has not remitted the money. And then you don't call in the EFCC, you don't investigate this, you don't say anything. And then the name of the accounting officer that made the deduction was there. Call the person, take this up internally. It's so unfair for you to have punish a company. Because when you don't issue them the tax clearance, you're actually forcing them to pay the money again, twice. And then they can't trade without their tax clearance. That is grossly unfair. But it's a widespread practice. Thank you very much, Mr. Kenneth. I mean, so this, this is quite, quite, um, uh, you know, disheartening to see that uh, the Federal Internal Revenue Service goes hard on private businesses, but the government ministries, departments, and agencies are allowed to, to go scot-free for this loan. Um, is it a case of the FIRS turning a blind eye, or is it a case of just trying to, you know, make the business of government easy and not be a blockade to the smooth running of these uh, ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government? Well, the thing is that when a, when a company complains to FIRS, the duty of FIRS to call in the law enforcement agencies, or at least at the minimum, interrogate the situation with the appropriate MDA, but to leave it with take it or leave it situation where you're asking a company to pay back that same money again because you didn't see it on your portal and you're looking at the evidence that he has paid it, the receipt given to him, it means that there's complicity between the FIRS and whoever else are involved in this. And I have to tell you this, that it, I don't think it is a, is, is, is a, a standard practice for companies to do that as a matter of policy. I think it's more to do with the accounts people in the departments that may well be diverting this money to another account. So, and this thing happens all the time. It's just that they're not taking it very seriously. And when they're not taking it very seriously and calling in the ICPC or EFCC, then it means that there's complicity between, it, between the, the parties involved in this. You know, we've known cases where uh, an accounts officer opens an account and keep on paying some money into those accounts. 
and these are monies that have been deducted and need to reflect on the on the FIRS portal. And then who bears the brunt is the company that bears the brunt, being forced to go and repay pay another another money, and then and then and or face the the, the reality that he doesn't get his tax clearance to continue his business. Okay, so um, th this is not the first time, like you have also mentioned, where we have government agencies and you have other persons not paying taxes or not remitting. At this particular point, our focus is on, you know, government uh, agencies now not remitting. At the time in 2018, we also remember a report saying the CBN was owing about 10 uh, trillion naira, if I'm not mistaken. Now, what is the implication of all of this, where you have government agencies not remitting taxes? Well, the thing is, uh, it, it, there has serious economic implications because you are, you are depriving companies their ability to trade. Now, that is very, very unfair because you know that without your tax clearance, there's nothing, nowhere you can go. You can't tender for contracts anymore because you have to submit. This one of the things that you have to submit. And just one single payment or two loss of payments that have not been reflected, they just simply refuse to give you your clearance. I think that's very, very unfair. And the, the repercussions on the private sector is just unbelievable because you suddenly bring in a company activity to a stop. Uh, it doesn't all go well for the well, for the health of our economy. Then, of course, the second one is that it's about uh, integrity. If where we see corruption, we have to fight corruption. Where you fail to fight or report, then there's complicity. And, and we need to look into this. It, it's just not acceptable. And we will have this scale of fraudulence going on in our system. Uh, Mr. Kenfe, it, it all sounds strange to, to um, you know, the layman on the street to hear that government is owing government. I mean, it, it sounds strange. And um, that government agencies, ministries and departments actually pay tax. Um, since this is a, a government and, and it's a government problem, you know, you're looking at the um, National Assembly, the House of Representatives, the Senate, ministries like the Ministry of Agriculture. I mean, some time ago we heard that um, uh, the uh, federal government ministries are owing um, about 90 billion in electricity debts. Um, is it not possible to have these these deducted at, at source so that we don't have some of these issues coming up? Is, is that possible? I'm not sure it is possible because they make budgetary allocations for particular lines of expenditure. And then you get a contract, then they have to pay you. It is at the point of payment for the contract that they make the deduction. That deduction cannot be foreseen because, you know, for you to deduct at source, what the government can only deduct is revenue at source. Uh, that is as you are receiving your revenue. But when you are spending, they have no way of knowing how many contracts you are going to pay. The size of these contracts is at the point when you make the payment that you need to um, uh, make the deduction. And then making the deduction is one thing. Paying it is another thing. This matter is not the same as government agencies owing electricity. But you know, we're talking about criminal activity that certain money has been deducted and is clearly against the law. The regulations against this is a criminal activity not the if you are not paying uh, electricity bill then that's okay they can come and cut off your electricity and then you fight it out but this is a criminal activity where you have criminal gangs that are making the options and, ch and channeling it to private accounts and, and and that is what it sounds like i don't see that as a deliberate policy that the director general of a, an agency says look make sure you don't pay all the taxes all the withholding tax keep it and then we'll put it in the head and use it to do more. Things. I'm not sure that is the way. This is a criminal activity, and individuals that have done this should be persecuted. So um, it, it's really uh, you know very shocking and very saddening because at the end of the day, uh, we're looking at the fact that the Fiscal Responsibility uh, Act actually mandates that government agencies make this payment to uh, the accounts. But that's not happening. And so for these violations, are there penalties? Uh, what kind of penalties? And how do we now uh, overcome this, especially that it has to do with government? So uh, how do we overcome all of this uh, non-remittance by government agencies? Well, Fiscal Responsibility Act 
actually deals more with the revenues um, accruing to different uh, ministries, uh, the different departments, sorry, different agencies, and there are over 200 of such agencies. It is their primary revenue that they are targeting with the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007. Um, or of course, you can argue that those remittances of those things are primary revenues for FIRS. You can actually argue that, and they themselves will, will make a cut from the administration. But by and large, the focus of the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 is on the income earned by the agencies that are assumed to be trading and generating surplus. So the law says, in fact, there's, there's an administrative uh, injunction that says don't spend more than 50% of your turnover. Then the other, the main law says you have to pay 80% um, of your operating surplus, failing which we can come and clamp down. Office of the Accountant General will clamp down on your income and take 25% from source. So, you know, those are the three ways that they are taking these monies. But, the, but you can see these monies coming in for as primary income to these um, organizations, depending on their status. But the fact of the matter is this one that we are talking about is fraudulent activity by gangsters and all kinds of people. So it, it needs to draw the attention of the law enforcement agencies to unlock, unlock this. Uh, the, the, the headlines from the papers are using the word loss, Mr. Kenifer. Um, are we to take it that these monies cannot be recovered? I mean, of course, you've said that uh, certain persons no, no, can No, they can be recovered because the receipts are there. You can't demand your receipt. You see, the thing is this. Who, how do they find out that money was not remitted? It's only when you come to FIRS demanding for tax clearance, they will say, okay, what's the name of the company? They will go and check. And they see all all the all the all the things that have come in on this company in the in their portal, and then when they see those, and they will ask you to go and get your account. You get your account, your bank account. They will also see some of the transactions, and they start looking for uh, tax that was paid or withholding tax that was paid in relation to those deductions. And that's where they find out, and they do nothing. And that's that's the criminal side of it. They do nothing. You tell the person, okay, there's no evidence in the pot that you did, this deduction was made. He said, okay, all right, okay, I'm coming. He goes to the account department, takes his, in, his, his invoice to them, says, look, you made this deduction. I need a receipt for this. In the revenue is what they will initially, they will try and play you out, tell you to come back next week, come back next week. The demand is not there. They will be doing all that until you persist and persist, they will give you the receipt. And then when they give you the receipt, you go back to the IRF, FIRS, and then they play another game. Either they talk to them or whatever, and then nothing happens. They still insist that you go and pay that money. And that is where it's a criminal enterprise. So, sir, should we say that this is a case where uh, we can just say that all hope is lost because government would have to, you know, remit and government is not remitting. So it's like government cheating government and who then should correct the wrongs if government themselves are not doing the need for when you have to separate these things, there are two separate things. One is fail, failing to account. The other one is just non-compliant with, you know, what's wrong with somebody, you are owing somebody electricity bill. If he hasn't got the money, he hasn't got the money. If he's not in his budget, he has not in his budget. You can always have an arrangement for him to pay, you know, as a window or, you know, some mental payment. But that's a different thing. When, according to the law, a certain deduction has been made, it has to be paid to the appropriate authority. If it doesn't happen, we have the same thing in payroll. Where when they run uh, IPPIS, that's the, the, the payroll system, when they run it on BVN, they saw where 35 bank accounts were in the same name. And that's an officer sitting in the in accounts department having 35 account numbers and paying money, people's money into the accounts. So is that are you going to blame the department? You blame you look for the people who are doing this. The government department doesn't have those bank accounts, certified bank accounts to pay people's debt. It's individuals inside these accounts departments that are doing this uh, in collusion. So when you see this, you take action. You make appropriate reports. So, so who should take action? Exercise. Because that's the question now. No, the FIRS needs to take action because FIRS is the one demanding you to go and pay twice. That once it has come to public notice, to their notice, 
they have to take action. So they are the ones to sort themselves out. Otherwise, there's complicity. Yeah. And you don't come back to somebody who has paid tax and asking him to go and pay it again because some other colleague of yours somewhere uh, has refused to pay it in or has diverted the money. And the client goes back and gets a proper receipt to show that he has paid it, and you do nothing except insist that he should go and pay it again twice. You know, how, who would you take this to? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Kenfe, it's, it's really disheartening to hear in a time when Nigerians are really um, groaning under the pressure of increased taxes and, and levies and rates to hear that, you know, these taxes that they are paying uh, are not finding their way back to the government uh, account, federal government's account. I mean, we're hearing Federal Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, Federal College of Freshwater Fisheries Technology. Um, I don't know how many people knew that existed. Uh, we're hearing agencies like the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, uh, the Nash Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. I mean, how many people pay you know, at the airports and all that, and all these airlines who are made to pay taxes, you look at what we pay to fly in Nigeria um, as tax or money that goes to the government and all the airlines, it's quite a lot. Um, you look at the Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited, all these agencies um, are not remitting things like stamp duty, value added tax that Nigerians are paying, withholding tax and pay as you end, deducted from awarded contracts. Now, um, who slept on the ball? You know, because you've mentioned the you use the word collusion, for instance. You've talked about the Federal Internal Revenue Service. We know that the Auditor General's office was the one that has you know, un unveiled this or exposed this to Nigerians. But who should pay? If you're hearing that the House of Reps and Senate, they're not also you know, remitting the taxes, who should be held accountable? Who should pay? The person that you do not want to be held accountable is the person that has already paid that money. That is the person from which you have deducted the money. It should give him the benefit of the doubt because all that this company has to do is to provide the evidence that he has paid that tax that has been deducted from him. And you should deal with the company and then refer the internal matter to wherever you want to refer it within the system. So that should be now a matter between FIRS and the appropriate agency. But you must give credit. You must give credit to the company from whom this deduction has been made so that they can go about their business. But you can't hold them to ransom. And then if you hold them to ransom, it means that you're actually demanding bribe from them because it, it's totally unfair. You can't be holding them to ransom when you've already provided the primer for say evidence that this deduction has been made. And once that evidence has been provided, you should not chastise the third party. You should now refer this to an internal mechanism within the service for resolving this or getting the culprit or finding who is responsible. But you cannot hold the public uh, 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 responsible and then punish the, 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 the company for no good reason. Mr. Mm. Mr. one last one. I mean, the, 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 the federal government really uh, gave a lot of hope, especially with the, um, the action coming from the vice president's office, with the ease of presidential ease of doing business initiative and all that. There seemed to be um, sort of an upswing and an and effort, you know, from the presidency, particularly the office of the vice president, to make businesses um, find it easier in terms of taxes, remittances, and generally the ease of doing business. And um, what went wrong? What happened? Well, they tried, actually, because don't forget that uh, they, they managed to move up 20 places in the in the ranking, although they've suspended all the process anymore. They were by no longer doing that. But they tried. They really, really tried, because this is part of multiple taxation. But this is multiple taxation bordering on criminality. And that's the difference. You know, the, you know that... You know, the, way, the fact that they tax you in one state as your goods are crossing, going to the seaport, and tax in another state, and tax in, it's different. It's different because there are different tax jurisdictions. It's different from you having tax and the evidence that this has, has not transmitted. So that, that's, that's a different. That is criminality. The other one is just administrative uh, uh, laxity, and then that needs to be dealt with. The other one is a criminal act. Uh, it needs to be prosecuted. Okay, so um, let's also stay with the fact that um, the Auditor General, the question here would be, is it really doing enough? We know that the Constitution empowers him Section 2, I mean 85 subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution allows him to audit the accounts of, you know, all federal accounts and what have you. 
Uh, do you think that he's doing think, enough? Because one would want to ask if that audit has been carried out, you know, currently and we're doing it e efficiently, we probably might not get to this point where we are now. So I'd like to share your thoughts. You think that the Auditor General of the Federation is doing enough? I don't think you expect you should expect the Auditor General to do any more than publish his report, which he has done. Fiscal Responsibility Commission that is now, uh, according to the revision of the law, FRA 2007, is going to be given prosecutorial power. Uh, that means that where they detect fault uh, in, the, in the accounting, they will do an assessment and they start uh, immediate legal action. It's no longer write a report out to the general's office and then they will send the report to EFCC and these people will go around and you know, they know those process are going to bump, you know, according to the new amendment. But I can't expect that the uh, FRC is going to get into this corner of non-remittance to an agency. They are actually, if they are doing, if they are looking at the accounts of FIRS, is the accounts of FIRS. It is not for them to go and look at what should enter into the accounts of FIRS. So I wouldn't be expecting them to take any action or prosecute. It is the FIRS that should be doing this, reporting this. The least they would do is to contact the agency that was purported to have made this thing, just to establish that the receipts being shown to them are not fake receipts. They should establish that. And if they establish that to their satisfaction, fair enough. If they don't, they can make a report to, to or ask the client to make a report to, to the EFCC or ICPC, or whichever one is applicable. But I think it's not fair that somebody who has legitimately allowed the deduction on his, on his transaction got a receipt to that effect, and then you are not doing anything. You have a duty. You have a duty to pursue your collection or, or, or don't turn around and then pass that book to the company that has already met his obligation. So that is, that's, and that I can, it's only, the only one I can think of is either there's a special tribunal set up by government to deal with this matter, or just refer it to EFCC. It, easy. And if EFCC goes in, they will unlock everything going on for years in that department, especially the accounts department. So you should get them in. And when you do this for two people, three people, then everybody will learn and then they will stop the practice. Okay, so do you also agree with those who's, who are saying that the reason why uh, we're going through what we're going through right now is because Nigeria has not adopted uh, best practice technology as other parts of the world are doing so that we have people not uh, evading tax? No, we have adopted a lot of technology. If you look at the GIFMIS, First of all, the TSA, the Treasury Single Account, was useful because it started blocking government putting deposit with a bank and then go back and borrow money. That deposit earns them zero interest, and then they go back and borrow part of that money and be paying 15% interest. I mean, that was another kind of fraud. So how do we now end this fraud? I mean, you are an economist. How do we end this fraud in so the system? They that. And then you now moved it. Was that having some traction? Yeah, having some traction, a lot of traction in, in there. Because I've actually seen where what, what, one of the uh, modules is saying is looking at when a contractor comes as just open project in the finance. If they found out that the the amount of money being owed to government is almost equal to the amount government is owing people, so I saying, okay. So if when you come to for payment, they will just go and check your company status, and then if you are claiming five billion. They'll tell you, ah, you know, we found out that you're owing us two billions. Can you settle that, please? And then you can settle it, and then they pay you the balance, three, three billion. So that's beginning to work. Then you have the IPPIS, which is the personnel system. And that personnel system is also unlocking the, the fraud, the level, the scale of the fraud, especially when you run that over BVN. And BVN is also helping the banking system, helping everybody. So... So that, that government is, is trying. But these ones that are not heavily affected, okay, the CIA is a suspect of their portal where all the payments will report. But they are failing to clean their act. Because if you have obvious cases like this, you should pursue those cases. You know? 
Because you don't know what has happened when the officers have spoken to the person who would have issued the receipt. You don't know what they have what they have talked about. You don't know, you know, whether they did anything or did something and they decide, decide that they should get more money out of the company. You don't know. All right, uh, that's the much we can take at this point in time. Thank you so much, Mr. Kenny Fair, for sharing your thoughts. We do appreciate your time with us this morning, and we look forward to uh, speaking to you on this particular issue. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Kenny Fair is an economist, and we do appreciate his time. Uh, we look up to, our, you know, we're hoping that we get to a point where there will be transparency in the it's, system. It's, it's really shocking, you know, because a lot of Nigerians uh, from the business and the private sectors are... Uh, really struggling to pay their taxes and to just to be good Nigerians and to hear the government is um, someone the government is is taking the money to the personal accounts. It's it really shouldn't be the case. And and I mean, you want to um, say that this is a person who should uphold the law Absolutely. and uh, should do the right thing. Absolutely. Really sad, but um, hoping as always that we get to a point where we are very transparent and we're doing what is right. And of course, Nigerians would also emulate. Well, we step on the brakes right now. When we come through, we head straight to our second conversation. Of course, we'll be looking at the issue of uh, the Remembrance Day, talking about uh, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day and all of the activities surrounding it. Please stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs>